Hello and welcome to News Click and People's Dispatch. On this occasion of May Day, we are joined by K. Hemlata, the president of the Center of Indian Trade Unions, or C2 for short. We will be talking to her about the condition of workers in India during this COVID-19 lockdown and the crucial role being played by them. Thank you for joining us today. So, can you first uh, can we first talk about healthcare workers who are rightly being called the frontline warriors during this battle? Can you tell us about particularly about the role being played by care workers such as ASHA workers, Anganwadi workers, nurses, midwives, etc. And uh, the sort of treatment they're getting both by, at the hands of the government and, uh, and the people. Yeah, the ASHA workers and the Anganwadi workers, they are also along with the doctors and nurses, they are also part of the frontline workers. And they are uh, asked to go house to house and uh, take the identify the uh, people and uh, provide them advice and other things. So along with the nurses, they are going to different houses. They are uh, uh, conducting a survey. And the ASHA workers, though the Anganwadi workers are actually not uh, directly under the Ministry of Health. They are working under the uh, Ministry of Women and Child Development. But because they have close contact with the people, they are also part of the team and they are also going house to house. And uh, the main problem is that uh, they are not provided with any protective equipment, either gloves or masks or anything. That is one area where they are exposed to risk. This is not part of their work, but they are doing this because uh, they are closely related to the uh, people, particularly in the villages. But they are not having any additional remuneration. As it is, the ashas are not provided with any wages. They are only called social health activists and they are provided with some incentive, which is very low. And they now they have additional work and they are not paid for that. That is one issue. Second, they don't have any protective gear. That is the second one. And third, in many places, they are being beaten up by the people. In some places, they think, people think that they have come to conduct the CAA survey. And some places, they are because of this uh, stigmatization and all these things, particularly in the minority areas, they don't want to give the information. They don't want people to go there. So this is, uh, though now under this um, uh, scheme, the government has announced that ASHAs also will be provided this 50 lakh insurance. Actually, it is when they die, their family will get. So, but even that is not there for the Anganwadi workers. So, Anganwadi workers are also part of the team. They are also uh, subject to all these difficulties. They also don't have any additional remuneration for this extra work. It is not part of their routine work. And uh, they are also exposed to the risk. And they are also not provided with any protective equipment, nor with this insurance. So these are the main issues that uh, these uh, health workers face today. And if we talk about other sectors, there are also workers active in many other sectors who are not being talked about as much. So can you tell us more about them? And you know, they're also working despite all these concerns. They haven't stopped their work and they're the ones sustaining us right now. So can you tell us more about the crucial role being played by the working class during this lockdown. So in addition to the health workers, that is the nurses or the doctors or the Asha Anganwadi workers, there are various other workers who are also indirectly related, who are working in the particular circumstances, like the transport workers, the goods transport workers, the loading and unloading workers, and also the railway trackmen recently uh, we came across uh, a condition, I mean, uh, a complaint, where the railway ministry is trying to fast track. Generally, what they do when the repairs of the tracks, etc., the track members, they do that. They are done when the in between some time, when the rails, uh, when the trains don't pass. But now, because the trains are not running, they want to fast track that. And they are not provided any means they are not even under the consideration. 
there there is no scope of social distancing all of them have to together work and they are not protect, uh, provided with any protective uh, care so these are and uh, many places they are finding difficulty to even attend the work because their villages they come from nearby villages in the villages they have passed resolutions and they are saying that you can't go to work if you go work they now the government has issued guidelines that when a particular sector is working then the employer has to provide accommodation to the workers their food etc but these even the railways is not providing for their own track now so these are so there are many other sectors where workers are compelled to work the municipal workers the sanitation workers so uh, even the bank employees the bank employees are also working the banks are functioning and because of the jandhan accounts etc there is lot of uh, a crowd particularly in the beginning of the month but the bank employees are also not provided with any uh, protective gear or anything so the various other sectors the employees and the workers they are also working but uh, the government is not at all taking care of them in addition of course to the migrant workers which has come out as a very big problem the government guidelines which were issued immediately after the lockdown they say that the employers should not uh, retrench the workers including the contract workers and casual workers their wages should be paid and those who are in leave they also should be treated those who have taken leave before and could not join because of the lockdown they also should be considered as attending the work and they should be paid wages but nowhere is this being implemented very few places including the public sector undertakings like the border road organization we have been receiving a lot of complaints that they are retrenching workers who have been working for decades and similarly in the private sector many workers they are not being paid and not only the small and medium enterprises even in the big it sector we have uh, found that women pregnant women they are being retrenched many uh, uh, employees have been retrenched we have been receiving complaints for lot of companies based on uh, based in pune based in calcutta based in chennai gurgaon etc it companies including multinationals they have retrenched their employees and they are also not paying wages so this is organized an organized public sector and we have been demanding it is very difficult for the small and medium enterprises to pay wages because they are so small and they can't pay full wages so we have been de demanding that the government should help them the small enterprises in many advanced countries also the governments are paying the wages so the government should at least pay the wages for the or the workers in these enterprises so in general the uh, package that the government has given which is less than 1% 0.8% and even out of that uh, there are certain uh, accounts like the manrega workers wages which have been already accounted for in the budget so if we remove those things it comes to hardly uh, 84 or 94 uh, uh, cro uh, thousand crores so this is uh, very meager so we have been demanding that particularly the government has to take care of the migrant workers they have to provide them the wages and in addition all the non tax paying non income tax paying people in the country there should be uh, there should be cash transfer of 7500 so that uh, one foot and the other expenses uh, expenditures they can meet and once the covid is over you need the workforce people who have to work unless the people are there to work they are uh, subject to starvation and uh, malnutrition which is already very serious in our country then how the economy will run yeah and uh, we also uh, see that this far right narendra modi government in india is trying to take advantage of a working class which is vulnerable right now by attacking their rights such as the 8 hour work day so can you tell us more about that one the government is reportedly contemplating to increase the working hours may day particularly we all know that it is 
remember for the fight for eight hours work and that through lot of sacrifices the working class has achieved but 134 years after that today we find that governments are trying to increase the working we are not talking about the employers illegally making the workers work 12 days it is the government which is trying to legalize the uh, illegal 12 hours work day. And in states like Gujarat, BJP ruled Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, they have already issued notifications that 12 hours work will be, uh, uh, workers have to work for 12 hours without any uh, overtime payment. That is one aspect. And the second is the codification. Even before that, the government has been trying to uh, codify the labor laws. Already the board on wages bill has been passed. Now there are three core spending bills. One is industrial relations, second on social security, and third on uh, occupational health safety and working conditions. So even there also the government was trying to increase the working hours. And the industrial relations uh, code, if that is passed, it will be almost impossible for the workers to organize into trade unions. It will be almost uh, impossible to go on a legal strike. The right to organize, the right to go on strike of the workers will be totally removed. And the government wants to get them uh, through uh, either an ordinance or through executive order. Now, because they are pending with the parliamentary standing committee, uh, the industrial relations, uh, the parliamentary standing committee's observation on the industrial relations court has been submitted, but the others are pending. But before that, we, are, we received reports that they are trying to push them through executive orders or ordinances. That means that taking uh, advantage of this condition where the entire country is under lockdown, where workers cannot mobilize, they cannot protest, etc. And that condition is taken advantage by the government to um, satisfy the demands of the employers. The employers have demanded, the Gujarat uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, they have demanded that the union should be banned. Formation of union should be banned for one year. They should be prohibited. Union should be prohibited for one year. And similarly, the uh, uh, hire and fire. That was the uh, demand of the employer. So all these things the government want to do under the uh, means uh, this situation where the people are uh, suffering, people are losing jobs, people have no income. Instead of addressing the genuine situation of the people, their demands, the government wants to uh, satisfy the employers and attack the rights of the workers. And of course, we know the unemployment is rapidly increasing and the economy is facing a deep crisis. And the Modi government, along with many other governments across the world, their response to this situation is that they are uh, planning on uh, opening up certain sectors and easing down lockdown, easing lockdown restrictions. So what is C2's response to this move? See, lockdown whether a country-wide lockdown is necessary or not, that also is uh, uh, a, means uh, an issue, uh, which is there is no unanimity. Lockdown, if it is where the hotspots or where to contain the virus, hotspot, this lockdown is not a cure. It is only trying to limit the uh, spread of the disease. Main thing is you have to test. The testing, though it has been increased, even today the testing is less. It is very low in our country. So test, then you identify, you trace, and then you contain them. So that has to be the procedure. But that is not being followed. So even if certain sectors are opened up, then the workers will have the at least some jobs, some income. So that will uh, even uh, start the economy again. So that has to be considered properly. Lockdown, maybe it cannot be lifted entirely throughout the country, but where the cases are very low, where it is already contained, that way in a phased manner, it can be uh, removed. Uh, gradually, it can be, uh, uh, lockdown can be eased. 
so that is uh, we agree for that but at the same time the people's health cannot be sacrificed and now what we say you, you are talking about the liberalization today who are the people actually fighting the coronavirus it is the public sector hospitals today also there was a report in the media in the newspapers that uh, today our two thirds of beds are with the private sector in our country because under new liberal globalization the public spending the government spending on health has come down drastically and uh, 80% of the ventilators are with the uh, private sector private hospitals 80% ventilators two thirds of beds are with the private sector and they are providing only 10% of uh, addressing the 10% of COVID patients. And not only the COVID patients, even for the non-COVID uh, uh, care also, they are not providing because they are safely locking them uh, themselves up because they don't want to take the risk. So that is the type. What we need today is that the government has to uh, spend more on public health. The government has to, in some countries like Spain, they have taken over the private hospitals also. In this situation because uh, and what we see today in the USA which is uh, the most powerful country in the world there uh, almost one-third of the cases are in the USA of the total global cases one-third are in the USA and uh, one-fourth uh, deaths are in the USA a country which is having so many missiles submarines and uh, uh, spending so much on military why can't it spend uh, on its own, uh, the health of its own people? So it is the policy. So the system, the policies are totally exposed. So in this system, under new liberalization, people's health is not first. Profits are first. So in the coming days, uh, what we feel is that the government needs to spend more on public health. Health should not be a privilege. It should be treated as a right of the people as a responsibility of the government. And I think uh, from what we can all estimate, from what it seems that the condition is not going to get better anytime soon. And it is the working class which is going to keep suffering the more. So in this situation, what protest actions have been organized by C2? What are they planning to do uh, in the future? And what are the demands that are being put forward? Actually, we have already started. On 21st April, we had a All India protest day. The demand is one, at that time this demand has come up, the government is uh, thinking of increasing the working hours. So that was one of the major demands. But in addition to that, this uh, cash transfer of 7,500, no retrenchment, payment of wages, and then protective equipment, gloves, masks, etc. to the frontline health workers and all the needy taking care of the migrant workers, providing them shelter, providing them food, etc. All these were the major demands. The slogan was Bhashan Nahi Ration Sahiye. Bhashan Nahi Vetan Sahiye, Bhashan Nahi Aarthik Sahayta Sahiye. For the peasants, it is time for the harvest. They don't have money for the harvesting. They don't have money for transfer of their products to the cities, transport, etc. So with these demands, we organized a protest demonstration all over the country, like maintaining physical distance, and maintaining all the guidelines under lockdown. People stand with the placards showing these demands and the flags in their hands. And at 10.30 in their own houses, along with their family members, or wherever possible, the union offices or the CIT offices like that, we have asked them to stand and raise their voice. Because till now, they have been hearing a lot of bhashan, a lot of advices, they have practiced that. Now it is time that their voices need to be heard. And for 10 minutes, they have given slogan. And the response was beyond our expectation. In all the 22 states in the country, except of course uh, uh, where we have our presence, CITU, in Tripura, the government did not allow the threatened of uh, uh, vindictive actions, etc. But in, uh, everywhere, including Jammu and Kashmir, to all the states, around uh, 55,000 uh, centers. 
this was held and in more than 400 districts out of the 718 districts in the country this program was held in 408 districts in the country more than 55000 places and approximately 5 lakh people have participated this was means beyond totally our expect, expectation within a short do, uh, uh, notice through social media through telephone they have communicated and they have responded and again on may day we said that with this no wage cuts no retrenchment no 12 hour works tax the rich tax the super rich and save the poor today the super rich even the wealth tax was removed in 2016-17 union budget by the bjp government so even if you restore the wealth tax if you tax the 953 people who are billionaires whose uh, minimum uh, wealth is more than 5000 crores even you tax these people the government can definitely allot around 10 percent of the gdp for the meeting this situation it is not impossible instead of doing that the government is cutting on the da of the central government employees they are withholding that dearness allowance increase in the dearness allowance up to 2021 july they are asking the government employees to pay including the retirees pensioners also so the government is pushing the entire burden on the common people not the super rich and the irs officers who have suggested that they, they should tax the rich, the super rich, and action has been taken against them. Three of their uh, senior leaders of the IRS association, they have been charged, treated, including their general secretary. So this is the attitude of the government. So on you know, May Day also, we have decided with these slogans, we will similarly organize uh, in a wider scale. And in the coming days also, we have to think about, we can't go on keeping silent when the government goes on attacking the workers and their rights. So despite the lockdown, we have evolved uh, measures and how to express our people's uh, anxieties and voice their demands. And in the coming days, definitely, we have to unite. In the 21st program, we have appealed to the Kisan Sabha, to the Agricultural Workers Union, women, and so many other sections, students, youth, etc. And everybody responded. So this time also, the call has been given along with the other trade unions, not only CITU, uh, AITUC, INTUC, HMS, and the other trade unions also have joined together in giving this call of protest on May Day. Uh, their own flags, they will carry their own flags and these demands, formal demands, and in their offices and uh, houses, maintaining the physical distancing, not the social distancing. We want social unity and not the social distance. So maintaining physical distance, unitedly voicing our demands, we have decided to raise our protest. Thank you, thank you for joining us today. And uh, that's all the time we have. Keep watching News Click and People's News.